People no longer bound by their NDA. What can you now disclose? Not my own but from a family friend. Coca-Cola and Pepsi regularly settle disputes behind closed doors on things like employees trying to quit and join the competitor. Their employment contracts have entire clauses stating you cannot be employed by the competing companies even after you quit so to protect company intel and confidentiality. For example, a Coca-Cola employee feels like he is being mistreated by the company so he quits and tries to work for Pepsi. So Pepsi's legal team will inform Coca-Cola as soon as they find out and Coca-Cola will sue the guy for breach of contract and in return Pepsi will pay them. This is done so Pepsi and Coca-Cola don't sue each other's into bankruptcy for breach of laws regarding industrial competition and market regulations. Basically a peace treaty of sorts. I was part of the beta testing for DC Universe Online. I remember a few missions that were voiced probably just by developers before they hired the voice actors to do it. I wish I had saved footage of it but there was one where Supergirl was clearly voiced by a man doing a high pitched falsetto voice. One of the funniest things I've ever seen. I was just watching a video about crappy game pitches, and one is to make sure that your stand in art is obviously stand in. That way people can go yeah okay, that will get fixed and not wow this sucks. That makes me laugh. Not sure if I'm no longer bound or not or how common knowledge it is, but living in NYC I was paid to be a fan at a major red carpet movie premiere for a popular film franchise. 100% of the people there were paid to act excited as famous actors and a very famous director walked out and said hello and did interviews. We were under strict instructions not to let anyone know we were hired. This doesn't surprise me. I really doubt they would let the rabble hang out for real to watch famous people walk out. If you pay people, you have some control over things. Just a friendly reminder that under no circumstances can an NDA prevent you from disclosing a crime. The contract is not legal in that case and the NDA is dismissed. So if your boss made you sign one to not report them for something illegal, you can absolutely report them. I signed an NDA for a predominant American show where they take a certain type of business on the brink of failure and transform it to save the business. When the producers of the show found out my wife and I both worked there, they tried to fish through our relationship for TV drama. When they found out we have a solid relationship, they tried to convince us to fake our drama with scripted conflict. Long story short, we got fed up and quit during shooting. We were cut from the show. Oh well. G knowingly put crappy compressors in their fridge units knowing they would fail within a year. Rather than do an extremely expensive recall they offered to replace the units for free if someone complained knowing that a large percentage of people just buy a new unit. The crappy compressor was so cheap to make they kept using it in their profile lineup. Used to work in a warehouse where we made feminine hygiene products. The pads came out of one machine into several different branded boxes. Both the nickel gas station pads and the $10 a box pads. Also we had one product of pads where we imported them from China, then we packaged them into our own boxes. I didn't have a problem with that. The problem I had was the box had an emblem saying made in America. Would have been okay if it said assembled in America, but no. Used to work for Disney. They only use Disney employees for the test screenings of Marvel movies so I got to see Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Already great, and an early version of Doctor Strange that needed a lot of work. When we were giving feedback to the moderator the writers were sitting in the back with their heads in their hands looking very defeated. It was a confusing mess but they fleshed out the characters more so it was better by the time it was released. Oh also they used to kill a lot of ducks with Pyro at Disney World when they did the Illuminations show at Epcot. SHHHHH. A doggo is a doggy daycare in Minnesota that made me sign an NDA for two years saying I was not allowed to talk about the company mainly, sadly, because they treat the workers and dogs like crap. No care for how many dogs were packed into a room, which is both unsafe for the dogs and the dog attendant. Often I'd be alone in a small room with up to 25 plus dogs, most who only had the most minor of behavioral tests done to see if they would play well and they care. Owner also tried to get around not paying my workers comp when I did get injured on the job, and whenever anybody put in there two weeks after realizing what a toxic work environment it was, which was often. He would punish them with scheduling them all week or make them open to close 12 hours for all their shifts. 
If you're in Minnesota and looking for a reputable dog daycare, stay away from a doggo. If in the Twin Cities I would recommend dog days. Not perfect, but they actually seem to care. Remember, you do not need to stay for two weeks before quitting, at least in the US. If your employers try to punish you for leaving, just quit on the spot instead of putting yourself through that bulls. When chilies first got their awesome blossom, there were no machines to cut the onion, so we did it by hand. I had to sign an NDA before they showed me how to do it. This was in November, 1990, FT Worth, TX. There are power line transformers that predate World War 1 still up and running in the US and the utility companies aren't 100% sure where most of them are. They only find out when one finally dies. Someone over 100 years ago put up a transform that powered telegrams all the way to Twitter. Being a guy who builds power lines I hope I get to see one of these 100 plus year old transformers. Sounds interesting. That yacht manufacturer advertising a Kevlar hull need only install 2 SQFT of a 3000 SQFT hull for the statement to be enforceable in court. That depends on the other claims made. If they are promising that it is stronger than a traditional hull then it is an issue. I used to work in a call center that had Bayer advanced. Yes, that Bayer, as a client. Bayer you knows full well that their neonicotinoid based pesticide gardening products killed bees and were responsible for colony collapse. We were instructed to boldface deny and or lie to the customer or caller if we were ever asked about it. We were also instructed to lie about the spray nozzles on the bottles. Bayer knew they sucked butt and were almost always completely DOA defective, but they refused to admit it and decided it was cheaper to just keep mailing replacement nozzles. You know those Jackbox party games? They have a database full of about 200 Jackbox games that were pitched but not used, since rejected games often get featured in later party packs. Notably, one of those Jackbox games is called Poop Cake. Won't detail how it works in case it does get released, but there is a rejected Jackbox game called Poop Cake that exists and is officially documented for potential future use. Release the Poop Cake cut. A recently hired employee trapped a secretary in a bathroom at the company Christmas party and raped her. He was caught in the act, sentenced, and will serve a long jail term. All the employees who knew about the details were forced to sign strong NDA and ordered not to talk to any other employees. No one was told why the guy didn't show up for work ever again. The victim was offered a generous payout and never came back to work. HR put out a story that she was taking time off for personal reasons and her co-workers were never told why. Everything was hushed up as much as it could be. The company changed from open bar to drink tickets for all future company events. To be fair to the company, not publicizing the fact that the victim had been raped to the whole company is a good thing. I don't think using an NDA to protect her identity is bad. Using an NDA to protect the company however, feels less ethical. When Google Stadia was just a thing that was being thought about by the company, their totally useful helpful market research demo wasn't even a little indicative of what they were doing. They showed 5 seconds of a cutscene from what I think was an Assassin's Creed game, just a bird flying over a forest, and asked whether it was good. That's pretty funny tbh. An Aussie no-named company is building the largest gold vault in the world, in Dubai. It will be 20 stories below ground and above ground will look like an everyday shop. To build the hole, they have built a covering structure over so no one sees what happening. Still bound, can't say where it was, was terminated three times by the same company for a disability, ended up getting a rather large cash settlement from them to avoid taking them to court. They're bound not to say they terminated me. I gave them notice and the next day I got a letter saying I was fired. That's not how that works. And I'm bound not to report disability discrimination or elder abuse that I witnessed. Funny story. NDAs can't prevent you from making a report as a mandatory reporter to a governing body in my state. I reported them anyway. They tried to claim I violated the NDA. And the governing body in my state went ballistic and slammed them with a 7 figure fine. The CEO, CFO, and CNO were all forced to quit. The place is currently facing a multi-million dollar lawsuit for multiple negligent wrongful deaths. I didn't violate the NDA and kept the settlement. Suckers. We used the B-2 in the Gulf War in 1990, 
six months after its official first flight and continued using it under different call signs throughout the early and mid 90s. We did night mid air refueling missions with it to keep people from seeing it in use. It won't officially enter service until 1997. I remember on a similar post a few years ago, there was a guy working maintenance or something, the runway lights come on for 30 seconds, and saw a silent black triangle land and then taxi to a hangar, and his whole family thought he was lying until a few months later when they told people it actually existed. Cash Cab gets most of its contestants through a tryout process where it pretends to be another show. Then a producer says they will get you a cab to go to the next location which is how people get surprised. Thank you. This answered my biggest question. Which was that it's obvious contestants were legitimately surprised, but they always acted like they already knew something was going on. In other words I knew it was staged in some shape or form but never got the impression it was fully staged which caused confusion in my brain. LOL. Amazon is probably here but I'm saying it anyway. The reason why people pee in bottles is that they are fighting against tot. Time off task. If in a week you accumulate a combined total of 15 minutes of non-working, not break away from your station you are reprimanded or more likely fired. So walking away to pee. Tot. Slightly late to station due to high foot traffic. Tot. Stop at your station for a breather because it's hot. You're tired or sick. Tot. The above plus the strict metrics and constant oversight of the lead staff makes working there feel like you are a machine. It reminds me of film representations from the 20s about the, the sadness of the future's poor. When Intel unequivocally announced that they were not developing mobile phone hardware, I was testing their mobile phone hardware kits. Hilram Well Challen medical equipment functions on the same level as Amazon medical equipment for $40 instead of $12,000. The software is buggy as heck, and they have no intention of fixing it. This includes their vision line. I work for a lab equipment vendor. I've gotten the impression that lots of $10,000 plus products don't sew anything much different from their cheapest counterparts. I once read an audition side for a then unnamed Pixar project that eventually became the monster bomb known as the good dinosaur. The titular dinosaur, named Dolo in the movie, was named Simon at one time. I found pallets of candy in the top of the racks that was behind displays and furniture in my Walmart. One pallet had been the home of a mother rat and her brood. Did you know rats don't like raisins but will eat the chocolate off and leave the raisins in a pile? Management decided to put the unopened bags of candy on sale in the clearance aisle instead of disposing the rat infested pallet. For a brief moment I thought you were going to tell a heartwarming story about Walmart adopting the rats. Guess I was wrong. I had to sign an NDA before working with Sears. It was basically saying I wouldn't talk about the tactics they were using to survive in a changing world. That didn't age well. It was difficult to keep a straight face during orientation, but I knew they were going to be bankrupt in a few years. The writing was on the wall, but at the time I needed the job experience. We also had to sign a non-compete agreement, which I laughed at as well, internally of course. If you ever are asked to sign an NDA after you know the thing they want you to not disclose, Please get a lawyer to help negotiate. You are really playing who wants to be a millionaire. Uber was planning to make their own Google Street View for use in the app to better help drivers find riders and to map the world for driverless car technology. But they were going to use Uber drivers to capture the images for the Street View. The plan was to mail out inexpensive GoPro-like devices that magnetically attach to the roof of the driver's cars. Each would have SD cards that could be mailed back to Uber. Routes would be generated and the drivers could accept them in the app and get paid. This plan fell through quickly and Uber eventually sources this data from third parties and ultimately abandoned their in-house driverless car ambitions. Also Microsoft developed a really cool backpack mounted camera that was going to be used for something like Google Street View. The plan was to take it into pedestrian only areas so you could get imagery in doors like malls and in walking spots. The United States military snatched up the entire project for their own use and that product was never released or even announced to consumers. Google does have a backpack street view thingy though. I saw someone wearing one at Disney. Many, many companies have really crappy network security, where from a bar in front of the building, you could connect to their open Wi-Fi and use default passwords on multi-million euro machines. 
My NDA is still in effect, but I've covered my liability. A few years, with a previous insurance company I worked for, we fired an employee who had a nasty personality. Imagine a toxic gamer working in a call center and that would be this guy. He had been the son or grandson of one of the board members so he was untouchable. When his relative on the board got voted out, it was finally time for this little troll to be fired. His supervisor took him to a conference room to let him know he was fired and he was escorted from the building by security. As the HR manager, I was tasked with clearing his desk and separating his property from company property. That was when I found a heavily used 5 inches x 8 inches notepad on his desk that had a list of names. Next to each name was a mailing addresses and details about how this ex-employee planned to harm these people. I did some digging and found they were all current or former clients of the company and that they all had filed complaints against this monster. It was a hit list. I notified the board after I notified the police. The crap was arrested on unrelated drug and assault charges. The prosecutor now had to consider charging this guy for his hit list. Since she couldn't convince a judge there was a strong enough case, the prosecutor decided to impanel a grand jury. Since I was the individual who found the notepad, I was subpoenaed to confirm its provenance. Considering any other employee could have walked by and deposited this list on this butthole's desk, the grand jury decided to not move ahead to a trial. For the drug and assault charges, the former employee was sentenced to 16 years in prison. As a witness, I wasn't issued a gag order regarding the grand jury investigation. However, my work did order me to sign an NDA to protect the clients who were on that hit list. It was really just to cover up that they were in any danger. I signed and then quit as soon as I got a job offer with another company. Those bastards on the board cared more about their profit margin and public image than they did about people's lives. If they figure out I'm violating that NDA, there's not much they can do. They know antagonizing me with a lawsuit would only lead to me telling the media, naming the company and ruining their public image. Literal example of how NDAs are misused, understood and exploited. Paint Shop Pro 7 is going to be amazing. I'm a private beta tester. It's going to be bigger than Photoshop, me 2000. That's funny, I miss PSP. Spoiler alert if you are watching Teen Wolf and haven't gotten past episodes filmed in 2013 but the character of Alison Argent will be killed off. I was on set when that death was being discussed by cast members and was therefore required to sign an NDA that made me liable for something like $2 million in damages if I disclosed what I knew before the air that genre TV takes its spoilers seriously. When I was tech before I was a vet. I worked in a lab that mostly tested animal meds on animals, flea products, heartworm meds, etc. We had one product in testing for human medication though, which was an injection that supposedly was going to shorten the need to wear retainers after having braces. Of course, to test that, we needed animals that had worn braces long enough to replicate the changes that happen to human mouths that have had braces. What I'm getting at, was that some days it was my job to brush the mouths of like 50 beagles that all had braces and make sure the wires and brackets were in place and not causing any trauma to the lips or jingiva. The image of dozens of goofy little dogs clack clack clacking around me in circles around the lab super excited to see me, doing their ridiculous beagle howls and flashing their braces as they did so will never leave my brain. Your phone company doesn't always comply with FCC regulations involving the recording of phone calls. A lot more may be recorded and insecurely stored than you realize. Don't buy fine art except from a real dealer in a working gallery or a specific specialist. Never just anywhere. The Caribbean cruise industry is so full of vanity galleries. It's a scandal waiting to happen. My dad went to one of those cruise ship galleries with me once. With the reasoning that we get free booze and can watch people spend stupid amounts of money on worthless art. That was fun. Tomb of Annihilation is dope as heck. I play tested it, but couldn't talk about it until it was published. My name's in the book, though. Xfinity Internet officially sucks balls. Not that's any secret. Buy your own equipment and stop paying then rental fees, along with any XFI advanced security feature charge bulls they offering you. Company wise, they know you are sucker. I called Comcast asking how my bill could be lowered. They said that I was paying $10 a month to rent their router. 
told me I could purchase my own router to save the rental fee, so I did just that. The next bill was lower by $10. The following month's bill went up $10 with no explanation. Work in film VFX so there's a lot. And um, let's see. I mean the obvious is always that studio interface equals crap movie. I've never worked on a film and heard the studio wants to reshoot a sequence and ever had it turned out to be a good thing. But my guess is 99% of you know that. So a specific? There are so many good movies you'll never get to see because of studios. I mean you'll see them but not until they're recut, reshot, and completely devoid of any artistic vision that created them. People point to the Snider Cut or now Suicide Squad and I can honestly tell you if a film is over 50 million and not directed by Scorsese, Nolan or Tarantino it's created by a mindless collection of studio executives who don't know crap about filmmaking. Ad Astra was incredible and would have been such a tribute to 2001 but the studio saw it and got scared of James making a slow paced science fiction film that made you think. They pulled it from him made a mess when it was given to a second editor, because he wanted to add 15 million in new VFX shots, then given back to James to fix but with this new direction. Woman in the Window was interesting and while not a great thriller, something that was decent and thought provoking. Think Shutter Island. But three test audiences in New Jersey, a second distribution company, Fox to Disney, and a second director for massive reshoots created the shit show that was unloaded on Netflix. There are several big time films that'll never see the light of day because the studio bought them and is sitting on their release. Things you've never heard of with great directors and casts because the studio doesn't want to be associated with it for whatever reason. Weinstein was notorious for this but several other producers have done the same. What's going on with Scarlett Johansson right now is why I too common for everyone in the industry. Only difference is she's above being blackballed and has the money to pay for the lawyers needed to defend her. To finally just know if you go to a film and say how did they not fix that shot realize the director wanted to. We just didn't get approval. Or who comes up with this crap it probably wasn't crap until the studio got involved. That's really interesting. Based on this. It seems like there are some real similarities in the game industry. Lots of games that never see the light of day and are never even announced, despite some of them being almost finished. We also see that same idea of if the players think some character mechanic was poorly done, there's a 99% chance we're fully aware of it. I work for a moving company and we work with a women's shelter often enough. Typically women escaping abuse will have the shelter hire us to go in and get their belongings, sometimes with police company, and all the movers sign NDAs to protect the women from letting their new addresses slip. I can't disclose anything that interesting but I want to take the opportunity to say, those people who jump at the slightest sound, the littlest surprise, be nice to them because you don't know whether they are just jumpy naturally or if there's a reason they are like that now. Hey, just wanted to thank you for being respectful. As a kid, me and my mother had to go to women's shelter. We left everything behind. If we had a service like this available we would have used it. Intelligence agency work is often tedious, boring, repetitive, honestly safe for the public to see, but sometimes we see and hear some really interesting stuff. I retired a long time ago, and a lot of my secrecy NDA packs have expired, so I can share some stuff albeit with the details changed. Nearly 20 to 30 years ago, a couple analysts and myself were sent for a training program at an airbase in our country to promote interagency cooperation between the armed forces our agency. I should note that this airbase was also shared with a friendly western country's armed forces, and they would often stage operations in the region of our base if required. On the fourth day or so of the exchange, we were in the midst of a presentation when a couple of older, looking military officers barged into the room and ordered us to close the blinds and cover the windows with any kind of black sheeting if it did not have blinds. A bit out of the left field, but sure, we go ahead and do that. As our presentation goes on, we hear a slight whoosh outside out windows, then a squeal of tires before its silence. This is quite strange because this sound was considerably softer than the roar of the jets from the base we had got used to. As we have not been given the green light yet to open our windows, we leave it shut, but my curiosity gets the better of me, and as I am sitting in the back right of the room, I take a quick glance out of the window, on the tarmac, 
and taxing away from the runway while flanked on all sides by airport vehicles was a massive jet. It wasn't exactly black, more of a darker shade of grey. It looked to be relatively long, I would guess about 30 meters, and maybe 20 or so meters wide. Instead of an aircraft, it looked more like a delta triangle shape than the regular shape we see on planes with their distinct wings. One thing that certainly stood out about the aircraft was that the back was perched way higher than the front. That is, the front of the plane was much lower than the back. I do not know if this was by design or due to a nose gear collapse, but it was taxing on its own power. I did not get a good look at its engines or anything else, but I distinctly remember it moved into a massive hangar at the end of the runway and out of my sight. Sometime later, when we were allowed to open our windows, that hangar was shut and had sentries posted around it. Whatever aircraft this was, it was definitely not from my country because we simply do not have the resources to build anything like this, so it has to be from the western country's arsenal. I have tried searching up the shape of the plane and anything like it, but have never exactly found it. It had no distinct marking, no sort of exposed weapon bay pod, no livery, nothing. Maybe someday they will publicly release it because that thing definitely look nothing like what we publicly have today. What most people don't understand is that the tech we see is tech that was built design 10 20 plus years ago. SR-71 was built in 1966. Makes you wonder what's really out there. Community aged care companies hide family abuse of elders so they don't lose the client's contract. From assault, sexual assault, fraud, theft etc etc. I luckily work for company that reports all suspected elder abuse. But I worked for a company that weaponized NDAs to hide the abuse. NDAs that try to hide crimes aren't legal or enforceable. No employer can make you not talk about abuse or crimes. Otherwise crimes would never be reported because every employer would have NDAs. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.